Hey, want to invest in our company? We make cat litter smell good. Yeah, I'd love to be a first investor. So you'll be an angel investor. I love gambling and I have a ton of money. What's the name of your company called? Oh, it's called literature.com. Angel investing is how a lot of companies in Silicon Valley actually got their start. And in today's video, I'm gonna explain the ins and outs of angel investing for you as if you were five years old so that even if you don't know how the finance world works, don't worry, I've got you. Now, as part of this video, I actually interviewed an angel investor that has invested in over 30 companies and his name is Frank Chen. He actually also started a company that was acquired by Apple and currently he's the CEO and founder of Prize Pool, which is a prize linked savings account company. Now say you want to start a lemonade stand and you're the age of five or 10 years old, but you have no money to start one. You might go to your parents and ask for $50 so that you can go buy some lemons, maybe a table and a sign for your business. They agree to give you that $50 so that you can get started, but in exchange, they want a percentage of ownership in your lemonade stand. That's essentially how it works. Your parents in this case are the angel investors in your startup. And oftentimes angel investors are an entrepreneur's family and friends, especially in the beginning. Now, when it comes to the angel investing that most people think of, it's usually done at a larger scale. It's not unheard of to hear of check sizes up to 50K at the high end and 5K at the low end. Now there is a lot of nuance to angel investing. And one of the things that was really unclear to me was when do you actually get a return on your money, especially if you're the angel investor? You put 25K in, 5K into a company. When are you going to see a return? <laughs> How long is it going to be? Should you just think of it as like money that's gone? How do you like to think about that? Great question. From a lot of people I talk to and myself personally, it's all about, for me, is, you know, expecting zero. You know, the, early, the fastest one I've seen make a return is like two years. The longest one is definitely 11 years so far. Right. Okay. All right. And so like, it could take a very, very long time to see anything. So yeah, so most investments, angel investments, they go to zero. And if you're not willing to take on that risk, you probably shouldn't be angel investing. So most angel investors have a ton of disposable income, which means they just have a lot of money to throw around. And generally, you don't really know when you're going to get your money back. As you heard Frank say, it could take up to 11 years, if not more. There are two main ways that you can make money as an angel investor. So the first is if the company realizes an exit. So that's something like getting acquired, perhaps they go public, or maybe they get bought out. The second would be through share buyback. And that's when the company offers to buy back some of its stock from its investors. Generally, angel investing is really best suited for those that have the accredited investor status. And what that means is that that's defined as someone that's having a million dollars in net worth, aka they have wealth, or you can also qualify by having earned $200,000 in income for the previous two years. However, you don't need to have that status to actually angel invest. In fact, many companies will take your money regardless of your income status. Angel investing is hard and not for everyone. Should the average person get into angel investing? Oh, so hard. Um, Let's say you make 80K a year, 50K a year, you're in, you know, you're in Nevada, <laughs> and uh, someone comes to you and says, hey, hey Frank, I've got... I've got this great idea for a company. Will you please invest $10,000? What do you Oof. say to that person? Great question. And the reason why I'm hesitating is it you know, really depends on our own financial situation. Okay. You know, make sure, well, I'm a good believer of making sure you have like almost zero debt, uh -huh. or no, especially no credit card bills. If you're, you know, have a good stock portfolio and have your baseline. And if you have really, again, a lot of disposable income and you really believe in the founder and all those things, then sure, we'll go for it, right? But yeah you should make sure you have the other things in place because again, most annual investing goes to zero. <laughs> okay. That's, yes. that's, that's the biggest scare, right? Definitely so. true. Yeah. Okay, so even with that harsh warning from Frank, let's say you still want to get into angel investing. What are the things that you should be looking at? What are the most important terms? Let's actually listen to what he has to say. What are some of the terms that you should be paying attention to when you angel invest? So we can talk about a little bit of the, the safe notes that sure. we've talked about prior to this conversation, but what are the most important terms that you're looking at? Yeah, for the safe note, I think it's kind of, I think three things. It's, you know, cap, or evaluation cap. Okay. Um, you know, which is basically saying the company can only be, you know, basically, you know what a safe note is, right? It's basically, I think I know what a safe <laughs> note is. I know I've signed one and given you money on a safe <laughs> note, but could you explain safe note as well and then cap sure. to the viewers? So a safe note, in a really easy way of saying it's like a almost like a promissory note uh, where um, the money that you invested in our company, for example, would convert at a certain price okay. in the next quote unquote price round, like an equity round, right? 
A safe note just stands for simple agreement for future equity. Essentially, it's stating the terms or what you are giving to the company in terms of your dollar value, so how much you're willing to invest, your check size, and in exchange, what you are getting back. When Frank is talking about a cap, he's talking about the valuation cap. Essentially, what that means is the safe contract, what you sign, will tell you, the investor, what your investment will convert at. The easiest way to think about this is, let's say you invest $10,000 into a lemonade stand, our trusty old lemonade stand, and it's worth $100,000 in valuation at that time. In simple terms, that means your $10,000 investment can convert into 10% worth of the company at that time. Now, let's say later the lemonade stand raises more money from other investors, and those other investors deem that that lemonade stand is actually worth $300,000. Now, since you invested when it was worth $100,000, that means you're able to get shares as if the company were still worth $100,000. Essentially, you've locked in that $100,000 valuation price. So if the company is worth $300,000, now technically on paper your investment tripled so you're, t- you're paying attention to the cap right yep. which is we just discussed that yep. but what else are you paying attention to? uh discount of anything okay. so some companies offering to say a discount uh, at a capitalization rate or at a cap rate okay what does that mean that Same means thing. you get a cheaper you could get in for cheaper basically correct and so like you know like think of like almost like a disc like a couponing or a discount 10 percent, 20 percent, right basically the, basically when when the equity Again, in the next term, in the next round of financing, you would get a discount at that cap or that that rate. And so, let's say you're 20 million, you know, but you have a 20 percent discount. Really, so you're not converting at the 20 million, but you're discount, you're converting at the 16 million mark. Exactly. Basically. Okay. Basically. Gotcha. Now, the last term Frank is going to bring up here is something called most favored nation. Let's actually listen to him explain it. Is there anything else you pay attention There's to? There's another one that some people use called MFN, most favored nation. Most favored nation. Yeah. And so this is usually when there's actually a, a lot of investment happening into one particular startup. Um, the founders can this is determine the, the price is all over the place. And so the convertible note, or in this, in this case, a safe note says for MFN is that whatever the best quote unquote uh, price of the of the round, everyone gets that same price. Everyone will get the most favored mm. nation, right? And so wherever it lands, everyone gets the same terms as everyone else. And that usually helps out a lot in terms of making everything fair. So basically a most favored nation clause ensures that even if you are the original investor or maybe the subsequent investor, that you're all getting the same terms and the same deal. Now, if you're wondering more about the MFN clause, I will leave a link in description down below if you want to read more about it. But for the sake of this video, we're just going to keep moving on. Now, something that always baffles me is like, where do people even get into angel investing? It seems like kind of a club that you have to be in. So let's see what Frank has to say about that. And how do you hear about angel investing deals typically? It's usually through, I think, your network. My good network around you know other people who've done it or who are angels or who are VCs. That's primarily the way I hear about most deals. Actually, like ninety nine percent likely. Okay, that's not super helpful. Essentially, he's just saying you got to be in the know to even get these angel investing deals. It's like being in the Fight Club. Rule number one: you don't talk about the Fight Club. But let's say you are in the network and you are able to get an angel investing deal. How much can you actually make as an angel investor? Especially because there's something called dilution that happens. Basically, that means your initial investment gets diluted over time because of the subsequent rounds of financing that happens. It creates more shares in the pool, which means that your original stake is worth less. In in terms of speaking of time horizon, I've heard of people investing early but then they get diluted to the point where in 10 years really their return wasn't that great at all can you talk to me about that dilution? yeah so dilution is a big thing um and it's unfortunate because your, your check size is small so you're mm-hmm. not going to own a large part of the company anyways uh and so as a company raises more rounds over time you get diluted because they're issuing more and more stock in the company yeah there are ways to mitigate that you know there's this thing called parada where you can actually try to continue to own your percentage of share over time. Pro rata means in proportion. Let's say you own 10% of a company and it actually decides to go get more funding. You get the option to maintain your 10% by investing more money at that new value of that company. But, you know, at the end of the day, I know a lot of angel investors who, let's say, for example, invested in Uber early on. Sure. Uh, They got diluted like crazy because Uber raised a ton of money. But when eventually IPO, they made... A ton. Right. 
of money. I've seen some of those stats online, like someone put 25K and then it's worth, I don't know, however many millions. Yeah, let's look at the, some of these stats because these are absolutely mind-boggling. I mean, we got someone here that invested $5,000, Oren Michaels, and today's value is worth $24.8 million off of one $5,000 check. That is absolutely crazy. Now, there's also some other people, some other famous people on this cap table, as they call it, which is just an investor list. Uh, Jason Cal Calcanis, $25,000 to $125 million or $124 million. Pretty nice. Now, what's really interesting here is that this is not the norm. This is very, this is very much the exception. It's almost like saying, oh my God, that guy just won the lottery. I can do it too. Angel investing is rarely, rarely like this Uber example. So if that's the best case scenario, are there opportunities to actually pull your money out before the IPO? Because it seems like once you put your money in, it's kind of locked away. Are there opportunities for angel investors to pull their money out before the company goes IPO? Sometimes. Uh, there definitely are, definitely, uh, it's a, if the company uh, is continuing to do well, sometimes they do a quote unquote, this, uh, di- they use different terms, it's called like insider rounds. So they, they ask either early employees or other investors to sell you know, a portion of their equity in you know, uh, the next round. Right. Okay. And, and the reason why th- that is because maybe the company doesn't want to continue to dilute itself, right? But other eager investors want to get in the round, and so it gives a, a chance for early empl- investors, early employees, or investors to, um, you know, get you know take some off the table per se. Right. Okay. So it happens. Like Facebook happens. is an example where we were offered yeah. early early tender uh, mm. to sell some of our shares to DST. You know, it happens. To, What's over DST, time. just another firm? Just another firm. Got it. Right. And so it happens to a lot of companies, actually. Okay. So your chances of getting your money out before an IPO, likely not good, but it, it could happen. Okay, I actually have one more fun question sure. for you. You know, sometimes you hop on someone's LinkedIn and they're they're touting themselves as an angel investor. Do you just look at that and you're like, oh, that's kind of BS? <laughs> um, you know, anyone can be an angel investor nowadays, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's it doesn't not, really mean, it doesn't carry that much weight, right? It doesn't necessarily, but it, it, I think it goes back to like, who have you angel invest? When did you mm. angel invest? Right? Those are the things that really matter. Right? Okay. So if you got into really early companies and you are actually really helpful, then that's, that's what most people care about. So the next time you stumble upon a bro or a broette on LinkedIn and they've got angel investor as their work experience times like five different lines, you know that it's probably not worth that much. Lastly, in terms of resources for checking out angel investing, there was one good resource that Frank recommended. What does AngelList do? Oh, Angel is actually great. Um, I know it's founded by Naval, right? So. Naval is great. Angel is great. Um, it's a great way to one in one place find other angel investors who like either that sector or that type of company, right? It's also a great place for you know for me if I want to scout other companies as well. Or really just see sometimes who, what other company, or sorry, what other VCs or angel invest in that company. That could be really helpful. Mm. So it's actually, you know, almost like a LinkedIn for angels as well as companies. It's really powerful. It's really awesome. Is that the main site that people go to? There's not another site, right? It's one of the main sites. There are others. You know, there's definitely like this new world of, uh, what is it, crowd equity funding for angel investors, like WeFunder and things mm. like that. That, that. That's helpful. But I think for like a pure kind of like LinkedIn, checking things out, AngelList is the way to go. So angel investing is a way to alternatively invest. It's basically investing your money in a company that's trying to figure out if they have a product that the market wants, or maybe the product is already validated in some way. In general, angel investors don't have a say or a hand in the day-to-day operations of a company. They might provide an opinion here and there, but really they don't really have that much control. Now compare that to something like a venture capital firm, which may invest in a company, but in exchange they get a board seat, which means that they have more direct control over the company's decisions. Angel investing is not for everyone, but if you do hit it big, you can strike crazy returns. I would say be prepared for your money to go to zero, especially if you get an opportunity to angel invest. Just pretend that money was never there in the first place. Now, this was just a super broad overview of angel investing, and I definitely left out some of the questions that I asked Frank in the full interview. If you'd like to see the full interview, my Patreon members will get early access to that for at least one week, and then it'll go live on my second channel, which I will link down below. I hope you enjoy this format. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to link another other video somewhere around here that you can check out after this video and it's because of you guys that I can do this so I will see you guys in the next one peace